Ooh, what have we here? It's a kit from China. It's an LM1875 Assemble Yourself Amplifier Board. Well, it was packed pretty well. It came in a bubble pack and it had this uh, bubble wrap around the bag itself. And I don't know about the authenticity of these parts, but I'm certainly going to check them out. One thing that was really interesting to me above all was the board and the circuit diagram this has the proper input RF filtering they didn't leave off parts this is a really good layout that is a proper LM1875 board right there Here's the board itself. I haven't checked the actual layout if it's all correct or not, but I can tell it's a good board. Look at the ground plane. Right there. They got the lytic capacitors. They got the film very close to the chip. And then the ground plane goes off to the power side and off to the small signal side. So it's got that that ground plane I love to see. That is really done well. Like I said, I'll have to look at look at it, make sure they didn't make any layout mistakes. But it looks like a good board. If this turns out good, I would love to find a source for these boards or even just buy this kit and use my own components. I don't know if these components are any good. You know, this costs three dollars and some odd cents free shipping. Well, I'm going to check the components and see if they're any good or not. I mean, look at this. It says Nichicon. Focus, please. Are we going to focus? There we go. It says Nichicon. Is that a real Nichicon? I don't know. Probably not. Who knows? I just can't see him using genuine parts for the money. I'm really curious if that is a true 1875. Now here is a for sure authentic one. The package moldings look identical. The legs look identical. These are bent a little bit. This is all chipped and dinged up on the edge. It's got the little circle right here. Let's check the back. Let's get that around. It looks the same. It looks like it's authentic. I don't know. They just could be good fakes. When I bought the fake 2050s the case had a lot of differences than the authentic ones so that's why I'm kind of wondering I went through all the components and they give me good measurements I mean that doesn't mean that they're good components but at least I'm getting accurate measurements Ooh, look at that cap it says audio on it Ooh. <laughs> This board, I, I did a quick look at the layout, and it seems to be very good. They had to have taken this board from one of the sites and copied it. You know, some of the people who lay these things out, because that is an excellent layout. I got to find me a source for these boards. I don't know about these chips, though. Here's the authentic one for sure. It's got this little mark on each side. All of my supply of them have it. They have that little mark on the side, but the, the fake one or the suspect one does not. And it also has different lettering. All the ones, you know, these are from different batches and stuff, and all the lettering is that light, hard to read, 
probably laser etched. This is not. So this is a suspect chip to be sure. Well, enough yakking. I'm going to solder this thing up. And uh, we'll see how it works. Okay, it's all soldered together. Seems to go together very easily. They have all the values. Polarization for the electrolytics. It's all marked on the board. You just pop the part in and you're done. You gotta clean the flux off. They do have extra holes in there for different size capacitors. In fact, over here, you probably want to get a proper film cap for this input capacitor here. So that's all right. My the tip on my soldering iron is kind of shonky. I gotta get a new one, but yeah, it did okay. I did find this web site here but it doesn't pull anything up so uh, I don't know what that's all about one minor error is this capacitor is marked positive here and that trace underneath goes right to the input so they have it marked backwards however it doesn't make any difference because there's no real DC on this. It's all AC. So I would recommend getting a film cap. They give you all these extra holes, so get the proper film cap for the input. I mean, this will work, but if you're an audiophile type and you got to have all the right parts, I would certainly change that. Okay. What else? Oh yeah, we got to get a heat sink. They provide a little T-nut type screw, isolated. And they give you this, but don't use these rubber washers. They're no good. They have too much thermal resistance. Get yourself a mica washer, put heat sink compound on both sides, and then bolt it up to a heat sink. One thing I would recommend doing is get aluminum L shape and just bolt it up like that get washers nylon washers for here so you can space it up a little bit of course you'd cut this thing down this is obviously a long bar and uh, bolt it up like that and then you can bolt your heat sink to the back of it and that way it's supported don't have the heat sink supporting or I should say, don't have the chip leads supporting the entire board. You know, I see some people, they bolt their board up just like that. There's no screw supporting the board. So it's just flapping around and, and the vibrations is eventually going to break the leads off the IC there. Okay, well I'm going to have to dig around for a heat sink to bolt up to this thing and we'll hook it up to power and see if it pops or not. One thing I did notice, which I notated there, is that they only gave you 100 microfarad capacitors for the rails instead of the 220 microfarads. That's not really a big deal, but just something I noticed that was different from the board here, what was actually given. Okay, I have it hooked up to speakers, power, input, music player. Let's see what it sounds like. Sounds pretty good. Okay, it's time for power test. Okay, I've hooked up the non-inductive 4 ohm loads, scoping right at the load. I'm going to do the maximum clean power test. And before you get on me, I know I just said that you really shouldn't leave these hanging by the legs of the chip. But this is just for a test. So, you know, that's the way it's set up. Okay, I have this preset 
the maximum point before clipping 8.44 volts RMS let's see what we get okay 8.44 squared divided by 4 17.8 watts and I'm using this power supply that has the 25.2 volt center tap transformer in and that's exactly what I would expect to get from a LM1875 so that's looking pretty good for that being authentic which is quite surprising but I'm going to do another test I'm going to do a short circuit survival test I'm going to short the output while it's cranking out the power and if the chip survives you know it's got the built-in protection and that's another thing that argues that it is authentic okay I'm going to short the output with this wire look at it take it like a boss dead short circuit no explosions I had some fake chips before and as soon as I touched the wire to the output and shorted it together it was gone it died instantly but this chip is taking it you know what they say it walks like a duck quacks like a duck it's probably a duck so I think that is an authentic chip what's interesting I was looking on eBay and they sell a bunch of these boards different sellers and by the way there's one with less components don't get that one because they're taking off some very important components but what I was about to say one of the sellers said that these chips are used they might be recovering them and I noticed that this has a lot of chips in the edge there so it might have been on one of those clip systems you know that's still okay because you know, if, if it's a working chip an authentic chip you know that's all that matters uh, let's see what distortion looks like yeah turn that thing off there and it's just noises I don't really see any fixed peaks as far as the scope can measure it looks pretty good distortion wise as well Well, what do I think? I am extremely impressed with this. Extremely impressed. I think you're getting authentic chip, which is an absolute miracle on eBay. I've never been able to buy authentic parts like the TDA 2050, 40. Every one I ordered was fake. And I do that just to test them to see if they are fake or not. And, you know, I don't know about these other components, but this board layout is excellent. In fact, I might buy some of these just for the board. They are excellent and use them in an amplifier build I've, I've been planning on doing. Well, I don't know what else to say. It's just somewhat surprised. It is a good product. I would recommend buying them. They seem to start at $2.88 or something and sell up to, I don't know, $4 or so. So I recom certainly recommend this if you're going to buy a little LM1875 kit from eBay. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching.